if you would, please pray us up. Father, you've, Father, you've called us to your house again tonight. Father, open our eyes that we may see. Open our ears that we may hear. Take these hearts of stone and give us, give us hearts that beat for you alone. And now, Father, send your Holy Spirit and fill Pastor Paul so that the words he speaks, he will speak confidently and boldly. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Last week, our message title was A Big Ask, and we talked about how uh, sometimes we need to be desperate, like uh, like blind Bartimaeus, that that he um, he was just so desperate, as opposed to James and John, where they were just very self-serving in their request. But when we have that big ask, that big ask to be made whole, to be saved, Jesus responds. And our task for the week last week was. Ask God for what you really want and what you really need. Not just what you kind of want to, to make yourself feel better. And the question of the week, are you desperate enough to ask big? Are you ready to give it up? I, I uh, worked with uh, the uh, Lion's Den group here the other night, and, uh, and I asked them that question, and then one of the young men said, you know, I'm, I really feel desperate, but I don't know how to ask. And, and I think that's real, and I think that's very vulnerable on his part. And I said, sometimes you just, you got to get down on your knees, you got to get down on your face, and you just cry out for mercy, <laughs> kind of like Bartimaeus did. Did anyone else have any thoughts or comments over this last week? Okay. Yes, go ahead, Sonia. So, so when we are desperate enough to ask, it is it wipes us out, in your words, it wipes us out how he responds, just like it did for Bartimaeus, right? He, he cried out desperately, and Jesus gave him more than he could have ever asked. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, Ruth. Yeah, so and, and then he had the resurrection. He wasn't thinking to himself like we get caught up in what's gotta be done, we forget about it. So you're right. Jesus had that whole week ahead of him, Palm Sunday and, and his crucifixion and his, and his resurrection all in a short amount of time after he uh, healed Bartimaeus, but yet he didn't have that on his heart. He had taken care of Bartimaeus, and he does that for us as well. And maybe we should think of others when we got stuff going on too. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All right. So today's message title is What's Law Got to Do With It? We've talked about law already and you might recognize this uh, title from, I kind of uh, tweaked it from Tina Turner. What's love got to do with this? Anybody got a guess on the date for that? Anybody? 1983, 1983, Tina Turner. But, and we're going to get to why it's, what's law got to do with it. Uh, but I want to ask you first, how do you feel about freedom? How important is freedom to you? I think it's rather important, and it's not only important to us today, but it was also important to the people at Jesus' time. In fact, in our gospel reading in John chapter 8, 31 and 30, 32, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is important. Freedom is important. We live in a country where, where freedom is absolutely critical. In fact, not only do we, do we talk about freedom, but we sing about freedom. For the land of the free. 
We sing about freedom. We live in a country that we, we are based on freedom. Freedom is important to us. And those laws that are put into place, they restrict our freedom. And we don't like it very much. The truth of the matter is, though, that, that laws give us freedom. They provide for our freedom just as well as restrict our freedom. When you, you look at Gabby Petito and, and the, the, uh, her death and, and now Brian Laundrie's death, and, and I'm sure that, that uh, the, the Petito family is not real happy that there, there's no hope for justice. We don't know whether Brian did it or not, but now we'll never know. We live in a land, we live in a time where, where freedom is important and justice is important and we want freedom and we want justice. We don't always like our legal system. We don't always like lawyers. I got, I've got two very dear, one friend and one cousin I love desperately and I, I tell them all the time they're my favorite lawyers. But that's not saying much. But we have, if you look at the last year and, and people don't appreciate the legal, uh, the legal answers are laid down and, and we have riots and, and people want freedom. They don't want more laws. They want it done their way. Paul writes in Romans chapter 13 about adherence to the law. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Now I recognize that in our land we have politics that get in the way of lawmaking and, and laws are sometimes used as chess pieces rather than, than what they're really intended for, which is, as we mentioned in the children's message, for our own good. We have laws put into place for ourselves. There is justice that we expect. Now, probably none of us have done anything, broken any real serious laws. I doubt that anyone here has ever murdered anyone, but we have all broken laws. I would almost guarantee that each one of us has sped, has, has overdone the, the speed limit at one point or another, or run a stop sign, or we have, we have done something, we have broken the law, and, no, and you know what? We, we have all also broken God's law. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We, in, our, in our, our culture today, we think that laws restrict, but not only do laws restrict, but laws, when they're broken, also restrict. We need law that works for us, and law does work for us. If we don't have laws, we end up losing our freedom. John, in our gospel here today, in 834, Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. We don't want to hear about slavery. We don't want to hear that we're locked in this, in this desperate fight against sin. We would much rather hear about Jesus' words that uh, when you are free, you are free indeed. We want to hear about freedom, not about slavery. But we are slaves to sin. A lawyer came to Jesus and asked about God's law in Matthew chapter 22. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now I recognize that the societal laws of that time were, and the spiritual laws of that time were very much more intricately connected than they are today here in our world. But the, the laws that God had indicated that Jesus talked about here in this point, love the Lord your God and love your neighbors, those are everything that we do are based on those two laws. Every law kind of boils down to that. A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Winter talked about Jesus' love for the rich young man. But I want to go back there and, and take another look at that section in Mark chapter 10. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you lack one thing, go sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. This man suggested that he was keeping all the laws, and he was, but he had stuff that he was hoarding. Maybe it wasn't gold, maybe it wasn't a treasure chest, but there were things in his life that he was unwilling to give up, and Jesus knew that. He was trying to do what he could do to get to heaven, and Jesus was trying to help him understand, if you're going to get there by what you do, you've got to give it all up. You've got to do it. 100% of the time, without fail. Once again, Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are all stinking sinners. There's every one of us are stinking sinners. You and me, your neighbor, everyone. We all fall short of the glory of God. So let me go back to my message title. What's law got to do with it? Because really what I don't, what I, I want to talk about today is not law, even though I've been talking about that a lot. What I really want to talk about is grace. I want to talk about love because as we look at uh, Reformation Sunday, and that's why we got red up here. Reformation Sunday is tomorrow. We celebrate Martin Luther and the other reformers trying to attempt to bring, to bring grace and God's love back rather than law, 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 law. You see, grace is the other side of law. We can't understand our freedoms unless we understand that the law restricts our freedom. Just as, as law and breaking the law restricts our freedom in a societal perspective, breaking God's law or abiding by God's law you might consider, also restricts our freedom. There are a lot of people in our world that, that don't want to believe in God because they don't want to believe in somebody who tells them what they can do and what they can't do. But grace is the opposite side of the law. And we can't truly understand our freedom in God. We can't truly understand what grace is until we understand what we have done and how it impacted God's Son, Jesus Christ. If you've never been in jail, if you've never been locked up, if you've never been restricted in that kind of a way, you can't understand what freedom truly is. Don't understand the law and what that does to our spiritual life. We can't understand what grace is. And grace is why we are here. It is the love of Christ as to why we are here. Paul writes once again in our first reading today, Romans 3. But now the righteousness of God has been man manifested apart from the law, although, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believed. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. 
that rich young man came to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And the problem was his question. His question was, what must I do? And Jesus says, you got it all wrong. It's not about what you do. You can't do enough to make it right. Jesus gives us his life on the cross. He gives us resurrection. He gives us life through his resurrection. He gives us forgiveness. He gives us hope. He gives us grace. And I want to repeat verse 28 in that section again. For we hold that one is, not ju one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. You can't do enough to make yourself look good in the eyes of God. You can't. Just as that man who approached Jesus, he couldn't do anything to inherit eternal life, and neither can you. It is through faith and faith alone. It is through grace. It is by grace, through faith. It's not what we do that gets us to heaven. Ephesians chapter 2. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. Freedom from the law doesn't mean that we don't have to obey the law. Freedom from the law means that, that we don't have to suffer the judgment of the law. Freedom from the law because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross means that we don't have to die as he died for us. We are given freedom. John writes in John chapter 1, verse 17, For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Moses gave the Ten Commandments. God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And that was the law that the Jews and you and I are supposed to abide by. And absolutely, we are still supposed to abide by them. But we have forgiveness because of Christ, grace and truth, which is why he came down in the first place to the earth. In John 1, 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Grace and truth, because grace and truth that, that uh, is, the, is the heart of Jesus' mission. Grace and truth because of his death. Grace and truth because of his resurrection. Grace and truth for you and for me so that we can live forever. Not void of the law, not ignoring the law but saved from the law and empowered by the Holy Spirit to live lives according to the law. In Romans chapter 6, do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God, to those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. We don't have to live pressed down by the law. We can live in grace. We can live joyful lives knowing that we are forgiven, freed, freed for eternity. Paul writes in Galatians 2, For through the law I died to the law so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We are free to live now. We are free. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are slaves to righteousness. We are free. Free to live as Christ died for us to live. And let's wrap up with that, the last words of Jesus there in John 8. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Christ died to save us from the judgment of the law, from the requirements of the law. And we are free to live in freedom, free to live according to his will for us. Okay, questions, comments, thoughts? 
Yes, Cheryl. So if somebody says, why do we need the law? It's, it's for our own good and for the good of others around us. If we were, it, just like speed limits are, are good for those of us, all of us. Speed limits are good for all of us. We all, if, if, it were, if we had no laws, it would be chaos. And even, even people who do not believe in Jesus recognize that we need laws. A lot of them are the people that are making our laws. They recognize that we need something to guide us. Laws are not bad, but in grace we are freed from the judgment of the law, freed from the penalties of the law. Not freed from obeying, but freed to obey. All right. Anyone else? Okay, here's your task for the week. Simply live in freedom. Recognize that you are freed to live the way God calls you to live. Live in freedom. And the question of the week, and I'm going to give you the answer as well. You should know the answer. What must you do to inherit eternal life? Nothing. Jesus did. Jesus did it. Just have faith. You don't have to do it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that, that you love us so much that you freed us from the penalties of the sin and death. We ask that you would guide us and move in us so that we could recognize that we are free, free to live as you call us to live. We ask that you would send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and move in us so that we can be law-abiding citizens and representatives for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.